When asked what's the most important thing one can do to take care of their mental health, Novak Djokovic, he said, the number one thing is to learn how to consciously breathe. I think uh, probably the, the number one thing is to learn how to consciously breathe. I think uh, it sounds weird because we all know how to breathe. <laughs> Obviously, it's automatic, uh, but I think consciously breathing, really learning how to master that skill because that, that helps. So we all know that our emotions and our breath are linked, right? Like when you're scared, what's the breath pattern? Short breath? When you're angry at somebody, like again, short breath? When you're so relaxed and happy, what's the breath pattern? You take like long, like you go to a beautiful place and, you know, long breath in. So you can do the other way around also. Like by controlling your breath, you can control your emotions. For centuries, you know, cultures around the world, they've recognized the power of breath. Like coming to India, we introduced yoga and pranayama to the world. Prana is your life force and ayama means control. So ancient yogis believed that mastering the breath was key to mastering the mind. Now today this age-old practice is more relevant than ever. See, no matter what you eat, how much you exercise and all your other self-care practices, none of it matters if you're not breathing properly. Now, there's this book by James Nestor, it's called Breath, The New Science of a Lost Art. You know, he says, we lost that art of breathing. And he says that there is nothing more essential to our health and well-being than conscious, proper breathing. And he backs it up with many medical research and, and, and uh, studies on conscious breathing. So learning and practicing good breathing techniques, you know, it can really boost your physical health and emotional well-being. And let me share with you three most important things to consider when it comes to proper breathing. It's again based on you know, this book. Number one, stop breathing through your mouth. Our nose, it acts as a filter and it, it's our body's first line of defense. Breathing through our nose, you know, it helps to get more oxygen, like almost 20% more than mouth breathing. And you know what, like some 5,500 plus mammals in this planet, they breathe only through their nose, you know, for a reason. Mouth breathing isn't good for your health at all. A lot of people, including kids, you see them like breathing through their mouth while sleeping. And there is a very interesting solution for it. It's called the mouth seal. And you get it in Amazon. You can take this and uh, you know seal your mouth when you sleep. The science is very clear. Breathe through your nose as much as possible. Right? And you know how we breathe affects every system in our body. It influences our heart, heart circulation, digestion, and even our brain function. And breathing improperly, it stresses all your internal organs and leads to many health issues. There was an interesting study, a fascinating study, like 40 years back they did this survey with some 5,000 people and they found that the number one marker of longevity, it, it's, it's not genetics, diet or anything like that. It's your lung capacity. The larger and healthier our lungs are, the longer we live. You know, take like conscious, long, deep breaths, you know, in and out. Another way to improve lung capacity, as most of you know, it's through exercise, right? Especially aerobics. So any, any form of exercise. And yoga, again, very powerful, you know, activity to improve your lung capacity. It is all about breath regulation. You know, every pose is about breath regulation. You know, breath holding can be both good and bad. So when we hold our breath unconsciously, it's very bad. The research found that most people in a work environment, we hold our breath more than in any other situation. Because when we are stressed out, we hold our breath. And when you see that email or you know phone notification, we hold our breath unconsciously, you're not aware of it. And sometimes we overbreathe. That's also not good for health. However, intentional breath holding, it's, it's very good for our health. So practicing controlled breath holding, it reduces stress and it improves your overall lung health. So my favorite practice is the Wim Hof breathing, you know, Wim Hof method. So you can read this book, you can download the Wim Hof app, uh, 
very powerful practice and if you're practicing any any form of breathing exercise right whatever you practice if you're practicing great if you're not please start at least spend 10 minutes every day on breath work so i'll share with you a very simple breathing exercise those of you are you know new to this it's called the 4 7 8 breathing and this can be done anytime anywhere three steps step 1 close your mouth and inhale through your nose for a count of 4 step 2 is hold your breath for a count of 7 and step 3 is exhale through your mouth for a count of 8 you can make this whoosh sound when you breathe out so that's one round so repeat this you know four five times so this is 4 7 8 breathing So you can explore different pranayams, a lot of techniques, and pick your favorite breathing exercise and practice it at least like ten minutes every day. And whenever you're stressed, even otherwise at work and in places like that, take long, conscious, you know, breath in and out. So the goal is to bring mindfulness and presence into your breathing. The first thing you do when you come to life is breathe, right? And the last thing. you going to do is breathe out so life is in the breath breath is life thank you so much for watching i am srijit krishna stay happy stay healthy